forgotten. We've watched as complacency replaced discipline. We sat on the sidelines as clickbait replaced our history. And we kept silent as our skill sets and careers became automated, antiquated, routine, and forgotten. This is unacceptable. We're here to guide you towards putting down your number and reclaiming your given name. We're here to guide you towards your vision of freedom. The world has changed, and there's no more room for willful ignorance. So to those happy with being stuck, with being complacent, this podcast's not for you. But to those looking for more, follow us as we reclaim it all. For our children, for our grandchildren, and for future generations to come. From somewhere deep undercover in the Pacific Northwest, this is the American Revelry Podcast, and here is your host, James Lane. So many pencils and not enough lead. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be here on what, of course, is the sixth episode of the American Revely podcast. As always, I am your host, James Lane, and we are on time as usual. I don't know if you realize it yet, but this is a show for adults, for big boys and girls, not easily offended little crybabies. So, look... I'm not a bad guy, though I'm sure the haters are on their way, but I assure you, I am definitely not the bad guy. In fact, I'm the good guy. So, I told you from the first episode of the American Reveille that I started this thing with a plan, so it's backed with the weight and fortitude of my will, Uh, not to mention detailed with uh, the force of my MBA. Look, I've got both guys. I have a little bit of experience In this, I've got a little experience in that. I have experience in the trenches. I've got a couple pieces of paper. I'm not saying this to be an asshole. I'm really not. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to impress upon you is that it's possible to find a way to whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. What I'm saying is that even though like it took my own crazy adventure, my own odyssey to to pull off the stuff I've pulled off in my life, I did it. And This means that you can too. So when you see my website and look at some of my social media, you'll see I'm not really peddling any bullshit. I'm really just trying to put this good stuff out there and really interact with you guys and find out your stories and find out, you know, your American Reveille as well. I'm giving this out because I just don't want it to go to waste. It's valuable for me to to interact, to talk, to teach to learn from you guys and and it's valuable for you guys to be a part of the discussion and gain the knowledge. It's fucking free. I mean, if you walked past your favorite Mexican food joint and they were giving away free street tacos, you wouldn't question that you take the fucking tacos. So folks, I am that delicious taco and we are here for your education and entertainment. So we're going to get this boat sailing already with the stupid analogies. So What happens when you don't eat the right tacos? You know exactly what happens. Come on. You know. You end up in the shitter. You end up in the bathroom, learning the basics of abstract water painting, sometimes oil painting for some weird reason. So the same can be said about time management. You need to respect the clock just as you'd respect the taco. Fuck the clock up. And everything goes to shit. And the same could be said about the taco. So, well, maybe about the thing that the taco is supposed to come out of. So, do you see the similarity? Anyway, I try to keep things relatable, folks. So, don't fucking sue me. Mick Jagger once said that time was on our sides. And um, he assured us that, yes, it was. He added that a few times in the song. And... um, I want to tell you that he fucking lied to you and you need to get over it because time's not on your side or my side. It's not on anybody's side. In fact, every second we're one step closer to the moment. We can't do anything about anything. So this might be stressful to digest, but time is ticking away right now. If you're doing nothing, you're running out of time. 
with that being said, I don't know what it would take for you if you haven't realized yet what has to be done to really change your life. I mean, it's not the responsibility of our friends and family. It's not our spouse's responsibility, our school, our jobs, our community, our children. It's not our country's responsibility to change our lives. It's ours. It's our own. Of course, it's ours. So, Who else could it have been? I mean, why would we even think that? And hasn't it always been our responsibility? These are things we need to ask ourselves if we're sitting on our ass doing nothing right now. The simple truth is what most people don't want to hear, but we're now hearing loud and clear. The simple fact is that anything sustainable takes hard work, work harder than you could imagine, but it isn't impossible. It's just hard. So do you want to make that hard work just a little bit easier? Respect the clock. It took so much. It took a combination of of the Navy beating time management into me and then coupled with real life traumas after and before the military. I mean, all kinds of things in combination with certain events turned the light switch on for me. But, you know, in the first episode of this podcast, I kind of talked about finding value in the virus. And, you know, some of these lockdowns could be your form of trauma in a way, your wake up call. You know, this is our American Reveille, and we need to take this bull by the horns. With that being said, maybe you could use this as a kick in the ass, if you want to call it that. So with the real taste of possible doom we've kind of been having you have the opportunity to wake up real potential in yourself. So if you're just sitting around keeping your fingers crossed, you're wrong. You need to be actively searching for opportunities and value in the changing economic landscape. And and if you don't know how, you need to be reading about how to improve your weaknesses and acumens. And if you don't know what those are, then you need to know how to look in the mirror and do some self-evaluation. That's the cold, hard fucking truth. Look, It's only hard because it doesn't feel natural when we do it. It's not something we're accustomed to. We feel pushback or resistance, maybe as Pressfield calls it. But if there's something you want or you're realizing now how finite things were and you want to be more independent, then you need to act. Even if it's starting at the beginning, just start. Stop thinking, just do. I mean, do a little bit of thinking, but take some small bites and see if it fills your blood with some electricity. I mean, that might make sense. It might not make sense, but just use it. Do something. Just don't do nothing. A bad decision sometimes, as crazy as the sounds, is better than no decision at all. Inaction is the worst decision. Just nothing's happening. Nothing. You can't move if nothing's happening. So time management is on the agenda, guys, and we can actually start with this podcast as an example. So what did it just take to get to this point? Well, since I'm writing this, I guess you'll get the scoop now, won't you? This is episode number six, and though I'm going to be making weekly episodes with very up-to-date content for you guys, I wanted to make sure I had enough material out when I launched this thing. What's this have to do with anything? Well, I still work for a living, just like most of you do. And many of us are in limbo about if we really work or or not. Like, do we still have jobs when we get back? Are we going back? Some people are. Some people aren't. Some people never left. But for me, I really wanted to take this time to do something special. And since I normally would have 40 to 50 hours a week taken up by my normal occupation, I would never have the time to write 200 plus pages of content and talk to you guys like this to really put a strong launch out that I could actually manage when I go back to work on a weekly basis. So really the point is I realized something. I realized I realized that if you just sit around and do nothing and mope during this, this, I guess you could call it for some a quarantine, for some a lockdown, in some places nothing at all, and in some places it's letting up. But when it's over and the world has slightly shifted its timeline a little bit, I may have missed my only opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do, which is build a, a huge community of like-minded people and do something positive with it for, for all of us in our communities. And And I'm not going to lie, this isn't my first rodeo, guys. I've made some failed attempts. I mean, over a decade ago, I started a personal training company, which attempted to bring training to people who couldn't get to gyms. It, It was a complete failure. I mean, 
a few years after that, I tried to make a YouTube channel around some failed products. And I honestly had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I had the spirit and the energy and the creativity. I I was still able to learn and teach myself things like I am today, maybe not to the extent as I am today, but I had no education. I had plenty of excuses, but just no knowledge on what I was doing. Some people are going to have to understand that failure is just a part of any journey. I'm a failed wrestler, a failed musician, a failed entrepreneur, a failed leader, a failed follower, man, a failed, I've been a failed husband, I've divorced, I'm obviously remarried, but I am divorced, I've been a failed boyfriend before, I've done some stupid stuff in relationships, I mean, I failed a lot of things, even beyond what I'm saying now, I've failed a lot, but I definitely learned something, at least something from everything. And now here we are on a Tuesday, March 24th, when I actually wrote this line, I I had a dream and this dream was, was vivid. I watched my daughters split apart from each other and I watched my children's just future falling apart. And this was a dream, but I watched it. I watched the world basically burn in this dream and I was paralyzed. I I couldn't do anything. I had so many obligations and that's what I got from it that I couldn't do anything anything. And and I woke up actually in tears and it almost felt like something shifted in me. Like someone walked down to the basement and cranked up some crazy old generator that had been in the family for years, but just had been forgotten. And, you know, I took this as, as a consequence of my own inaction and, and this, this ice, this frozen state that I was in, it, it may be, maybe it's been temporarily thawed because of this pandemic that we're getting over right now. So with these different feelings inside of me, I really realized that being sent home and, and, and uh, going through this kind of horrible moment in history is really giving us is something we just never, ever had and always have had an excuse for, and that's time. So by March 25th, a couple weeks ago, the American Reveille had a life and an entire organizational structure was written out and basically posted up on the walls of my house. So here we are a few weeks later and there's an entire drafted plan and the walls maybe look like Russell Crowe from the movie A Beautiful Mind has been hanging out in the house and uh, but quality content has been actually created real stuff, real relatable shit that you and I want to talk about. And as we talk more and build a relationship and you guys interact with me and I interact with you, we'll have a lot more to go on about. And it'll definitely be up to snuff with what needs to be. So I'm not winging this shit and I'm not going to BS you. I'm, I'm going to shoot from the hip. I'm a professional. I've been sleeping maybe three hours or less a night since this concept to bring you something of worth. And I really, really hope that you love what I'm doing. I really do, because it's for all of us. So let's put this into perspective. On top of setting up and designing a web page, artwork, emails, social media marketing, and audio production, I'm also basically writing the entirety of every episode. Do you hear this? That's paper right there. So as of today, April 5th, remember, we're real here. This is recorded. And as of today, April 5th, since March 25th, over 100 pages worth of writing for the show have been done. That's over 25,000 words. Now, I read that on purpose because I wrote that on April 5th. But I'm telling you right now, I'm recording this on the 19th of April. So like I said, the more we interact with each other, the more these recordings will be much closer to when we've talked and much more relevant. But I wanted to launch big, so we're going to have to get 10 out. So with that being said, just like I asked myself and I've asked myself multiple times in this life, you're going to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? How bad do I want it? Even though I'm home, not working with the same worries as many others, even though I'm, I'm taking PhD level college courses, even though I have a wife and daughter in the house and, and two dogs, I want you to tell me again how you have no time and 
understand. I know there are some exceptions out there. So please don't contact me and be like, you know, I work 947 hours a week, six jobs. And, you know, I have whatever. I understand there are some exceptions and I tip my hat off to you guys. It's rough for a lot of us. And it took everything in my power to dig myself out of fucking poverty, basically. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, it is what it is. So I had read that the fastest it takes a quality team to launch a podcast of value was eight weeks. So I told my wife, April, and I call her Wifels, which are two things I love. I love my wife and I love waffles. So Wifels with a capital W, I told Wifels, and she's going to kill me when she knows that I told you guys this. I said, Wifels, I have so much passion and belief in the importance and value of the idea behind the American Revely podcast that I think I could do it in two or three weeks. And uh, of course, she dared me. So here we are about three weeks later at this point, measuring my time with all the hiccups we've had along the way and all of the strategical shifts this way and that way. It's going to be done most likely by next week. Maybe not on the mark, but still in the ballpark. But when you hear this, it's going to be somewhere in between 420 and May 1st, and it'll be all out and ready to go. And then we're going to have a weekly schedule rocking and rolling. So I'm also pretty excited about that. But you've got to understand that everything and anything we do has the distinct chance and possibility of going sideways. All of these things we do to improve, they mitigate the risk of those bad things happening. And one thing we can really work on improving that will really set us straight on our path to success, really help us cultivate that discipline help really lubricate that discipline is time management. Time management's a huge one. And there's kind of what I like to think of as a magic power in time management that many people don't really understand and don't really believe in. So you see all these companies now stressing an unregimented work environment, and maybe that works for some people, but boy, time management, time management's real lightning in a bottle, especially especially when you're working long hours coupled with time management. So here's my day. It's scheduled. It's planned. Of course, we'll go over that next, but but just look, look at my day so you can get a little bit of idea of the work and kind of have something to compare your own projects to. So this, this, by the way, guys, the efforts you put in, it gives you it gives you an idea of the results you're going to get out of things. So when I say things like, how bad do you want it? I also understand that everybody wants something different. So compare, but understand that you'll have to put in a comparable level of effort to get you where you want to go. So if your aspiration is to like breed ponies and somebody else's aspiration is to become the president of a country, there's a different path and a different fucking level of work or a lot of different asses to kiss there. So, you know, <laughs> Anyway, I usually wake up around 3 a.m. for work, but since I'm home temporarily on this lockdown thing, I've been waking up sometimes around 9, but uh, then again, my schedule's been inverted for recording, so I've been up all night for days and days and days, but normally I immediately get up, I do any cleaning that I need to do so that my wife doesn't shank me, and then um, I basically attend to my family for a while, just for about two hours or so, just... I need to have that time with my with my family. It's very important to me and I know it's very important to them. So after that, I basically give myself like 10 minutes to eat and then I'm doing schoolwork until 5 or 6 p.m. Or you can invert that depending on what time I'm sleeping or not sleeping. But I do a lot of schoolwork because of my classes. So then I cook dinner for my family or breakfast, depending on my sleeping schedule. And then I go to bed. It's usually just like a nap two or three hours, and then I'm working on this podcast either all day or all night in between my schoolwork just to get this launch right and uh, basically get the entire production set up so that I can run it smoothly after we go live and when I return back to my regular job as well. So I feed the dogs twice a day, 12 hours apart. I maybe eat once or twice. And, and again, you have to ask, what are you willing to do to achieve your dreams? How many times have you failed? 
How many times have you almost tasted the next run on the ladder? Not just tasted victory, but just tasted the next step. I mean, sometimes you have to get down and dirty and just manage the fuck out of your time. It's really plain and simple and clear cut. I need everybody to understand something that you probably can relate to. I'm sure you can relate to. When I look into my daughter's eyes, and this could be your child's eyes, your son, your daughter, your children. When I look into my daughter's eyes, I know that I have absolutely no choice but to sit my ass down in this chair and write and work. And when I go back to my regular job and we go back to work, I'm still going to sit in this chair and write my ass off. And I'll continue to do it because I love every second of it. And I did it before I did this podcast alongside writing for my PhD homework. And that's just to show how you know that I'm not going to go anywhere. It's terrifying to do these things. It's scary to do any entrepreneurial endeavor. It's scary to do anything new that could be, you know, life changing. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, are you scared of failing? Are you scared of, are you scared of succeeding? I don't care either way. I'm not expecting a paycheck. I just want to help people and I just want to make a positive impact. So I can make you a promise. I can promise that if you find love for something, like I found love, say, for writing, you're not going to have a problem with time management that much. But for those who might be stuck, and by the way, let me get back to something for two seconds. Even with the things you love, you may have some problems with time management. I mean, procrastination, resistance, as Pressfield calls it, it's a bitch. It affects all of us. So just because you might be stuck, don't think the person that has their shit together doesn't have problems. We all have problems. But for those who might be stuck, I use a little trick that I stole from some project management principles. I like to apply the term lag and lead time to my life to kind of measure hours and see what I can add and subtract to get whatever it is I need to get done. I I mean, this kind of goes back to the organization podcast that we did. And I kind of like to write this type of stuff down as well, but you can do it mentally, physically. So anyway, before we talk more about lag and lead time, just take a second to listen to this word from our sponsor. And as you know by now, that sponsors me. So I really do appreciate it, guys. And we will be right back. Hold up. Things go well when I pull up. Like it once, think I got what you need. Well, I have no hop off. You're a freak and I'm handsome. Slide up in the club like two chains. This snake is on top of the full chain. American Reveille Podcast with James Lane would like to take a moment to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to tune into the show. It's because of great fans like you that we strive to deliver the best quality content one can create as fast as one can fling the pen. The American Reveille Podcast with James Lane would also like to remind you that the American Reveille Podcast with James Lane is, in fact, sponsored by James Lane. James Lane also writes, directs, records, edits, and produces this podcast. On top of that, James Lane also handles the daunting task of running the social media management, and did I mention, he also manages the webpage, email lists, creates and designs the artwork, and everything else you could think of. With that being said, a good little boy never misses his opportunity to sell himself, and though James would never ask you for your money, he would like to let you know that if you absolutely love this podcast, the writing, the art, its production, anything, please do us the personal favor of liking, sharing, tweeting, texting, and talking about this podcast. James Lane is a father, a husband, a U.S. Navy veteran, and is personally committed to the success of the American Reveille podcast. For booking inquiries, potential sponsors, volunteers, internship inquiries, feedbacks, comments, or suggestions, please email James Lane directly at podcast at AmericanReveille.com or please visit our website at www.AmericanReveille.com. Now, now, let's head back to the the show. show. Be 
Yeah. I got problems or problems or problems or problems or problems or problems or solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left all my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is bad. Tell me I'm going through my license music. And I found this gem. And I found this gem. Problems and speaking of problems and speaking of time management, time management can help you solve a shit ton of your problems. So back to lag and lead time, this concept that really changed my life when I was studying project management and and learned how to apply it to time management. So I don't use it necessarily how it was designed, but I find that the idea behind it has worked tremendously for me regarding getting my life in order, basically. So in project management, lag time is anything that slows us down, kind of getting from point A to point B. And lead time, as you can imagine, is the opposite. So anything that speeds us up getting from point A to point B. So if I'm organizing my day by writing things down for the week, and I already know that today I'm going to have to get two papers done for school, write a segment for the podcast, cook dinner, give my daughter a bath and play with her, and and maybe make five separate phone calls about work or business, and also knowing that these things can change and, and backup plans have to be made, but not only am I going to already know what order I'm doing them in for the most part and contingency wise, no other orders I need to do them in just in case, but also when I'm doing them. And here's the key to lag and lead time. It's also helpful for predicting how long a task will take and, and possible slowdowns associated with that task. So, all right, guys, are you ready? Think fast. There's 24 hours in a day. Two papers for school will take about five hours on a good day, but I should add an extra hour each just in case I run into slowdowns. So that's about seven hours. Keep up with me, guys. So writing for the podcast takes about six hours to pump out a 20 page paper, rough draft, cooking, eating dinner, one hour, giving my daughter a bath and playing with her two hours. Keeping up with me? That's 16 hours so far. The calls may take 1.5 hours altogether, but any extra chores or help my wife asked me to do two hours, maybe more. Even then, that only equals 19.5 hours in total. So we get our four point hours of sleep for. 4.5 hours of sleep to be exact tomorrow, don't we? So that wasn't sped up, guys, by the way. That's me. Listen, all of that sounds really fast, really crazy, really annoying, and not many people want to schedule their whole life, but just a little bit of extra effort in this department even can make a substantial difference. No? All right. So that might be a little extreme, but I wanted you to see how possible anything really is when we manage our damn time. This stuff isn't easy. And I know I'm talking about it like it might be, but I'm giving you the cold, hard truth about it, about what we really have to do as a human animal to unlock our potential. And we all really do have some sort of potential to unlock. So zooming out, We now look at our week and realize that Tuesday's packed with all this junk, but Wednesday has about 14 hours free. So you shift some stuff to Wednesday and you get a little more balanced to your sleep or maybe opposingly you shift things the other way, get less sleep and a little less fun in your life in exchange for more time to work towards your goals. I'm not saying to do unhealthy stuff and constantly lose sleep and and torture yourself, but I'm saying that prioritizing, managing our time, scheduling our lives is literally, it literally can be like unlocking some mystical superpower within yourself. I literally have this big hunkin' dry erase calendar on my wall that I physically schedule my weeks and my days and, and my months on. And it's a giant pain in the ass, just like me. But it's much easier now, just like me. So here's the thing. Whenever I've read about time management and the techniques that go with it online, and whenever I've seen it in real life, there's always been a very big difference. I always read about one method or another, but I never hear about the reality of things. So here's the reality of it. Here's the reality of it. People do what works for them, period. That's how time management works. You may start with something, but you end up with what works for you. So this is why there's no shortcuts in the real world. It's because everybody's different. So we can't follow the same exact path as somebody else. We we might be able to start with that path. I might look at at somebody, you might look at your favorite celebrity or or someone you look up to or a relative and you might 
start in a career path that they went on or start with an adventure that they went on or or seek them for guidance. But inevitably, if you do it right, life will guide you in its own direction and you'll find your calling. You copy these foundations. That's the possibility. You copy these foundations and then find your own avenue. So that's the reality. And here's my reality. I have this calendar on my wall and I have one on my phone and I have one on my computer and I have a notepad or 10 and as well as scheduling programs on my computer. And on top of all that, I have alarm clocks all around my house that make my wife yell at me. And then on top of that, I have my wife to yell at me to remind me of things. So I have 900 measures of accountability to my time management. And the dirty secret is that I still fuck it up a good bit. But because of these measures that I've put in place, I can really get the train back on the tracks quick and in a hurry, as opposed as if I was just doing nothing at all. And I think you know, for those looking for a shortcut, when, when we're talking about what the secret is or what the shortcut is, if you really want to put a definition of something, that really is the secret. That really is the shortcut. Just getting in there and starting to work on these things. And and even if you're fucking it up, you're just trying. You you pick something, you you find inspiration somewhere, you go in that direction. And even though you'll inevitably end up in your own direction. The secret, the shortcut, the way to skip ahead is to start somewhere, anywhere, because for the people that are doing nothing at all, that are just staring into emptiness, waiting for, I don't know, some mythological rainbow creature to scoop them up into into the heavens and and rescue them. And um, in no way is that a religious reference. That's just a, a silly joke I made. But what I'm getting at is if you're doing nothing, you're never getting anywhere. So the shortcut, the shortcut's doing something. So there's obviously a point I'm trying to stress, and I really want you to understand this. It's very important that you understand that it's sometimes as simple as just starting, just start to get your time management on track. Doing this will start to bring compound successes, and that'll boost your self-esteem, your confidence, bring more wins to the team. So when we get back, I really want to talk to you guys about something else that has an impact on time management. And I think you'll agree once you hear about it, that it really causes a lot of problems around the shop and the back end results end up being half-assed work from a lot of people involved. We'll be right back with more of the American Revely podcast with James Lane. podcast with James Lane would like to take a moment to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to tune into the show. It's because of great fans like you that we strive to deliver the best quality content one can create as fast as one can fling the pen. The American Revely podcast with James Lane would also like to remind you that the American Revely podcast with James Lane is in fact sponsored by James Lane. James Lane also writes, directs, records, edits, and produces this podcast. On top of that, James Lane also handles the daunting task of running the social media management. And did I mention he also manages the webpage, email lists, creates and designs the artwork and everything else you could think of. With that being said, a good little boy never misses his opportunity to sell himself. And though James would never ask you for your money, he would like to let you know that if you absolutely love this podcast, the writing, the art, its production, anything, please do us the personal favor of liking, sharing, tweeting, texting, and talking about this podcast. James Lane is a father, a husband, a U.S. Navy veteran, and is personally committed to the success of the American Revely podcast. For booking inquiries, potential sponsors, volunteers, internship inquiries, feedbacks, comments, or suggestions, please email James Lane directly at podcast at AmericanRevely.com or please visit our website at www.AmericanRevely.com. Now, now, let's get back to the, back to the show. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the American Revely Podcast, and I'm your host, James Lane. 
I want to thank you guys again for listening. And I do, again, a thousand times over, appreciate your time with me today. So here's the entire thing in a nutshell, folks. This concept, in my my honest, humble opinion, really could kind of save the planet from implosion. You know, it's one of the most frustrating things on Earth. Half-assed work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. And I'm going to repeat that. Half-ass work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. This sounds all fluffed up, but it really is a basic concept, guys. So listen, you ever have a project you're doing at work and you have to turn it in, but someone else didn't do the paperwork accurately and now your ass is on the line? Or have you ever left work early on a Friday and not finished something that would have taken an extra 10 minutes only to come back to an ass chewing on Monday? Look, Half-assed work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. Ever go to Walmart, but you can't find the product you need because the overnight person stuffed the holes in the shelves with random shit? Or you ever drive on fresh paved fucking road only to have potholes fucking pop out just a month later? It feels great about where our tax dollars go, right? Look, again, half-assed work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. As you can tell, there's a pattern forming here. The problems keep getting more and more expensive, yet the concept itself, it stays the same every time. Half-ass work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. Half-ass work leads to your own and someone else's lag time. If our own time management is just okay and we're working on its improvement, working hard to, to do your tasks right the first time, will inevitably improve your time management. I mean, mathematically, you have no choice but to improve because if you're doing the job right, this will prevent problems in the future. And then you stop the lost time from occurring in the first place. It's kind of like being a time traveler, but not fucking up the entire planet because you want to do something stupid in 1956, like save fucking somebody's parent or something from disappearing at a prom or whatever. In this movie, everything stays normal and then gets even better. So you want to know the secret now to not half-assing stuff? I have that one too. And I told you I would tell you everything and you're going to hate me or love me for it. But I think I have set you up pretty good so far. So we've been talking about a few related and key things like vision, organization, fear, fortitude, firmness. We went even as far as to call these things lubricants to this discipline we've spoken of. And we said that they could smoothen out the rusty sliding door or tracks to that door that is the discipline by spraying themselves onto the tracks like their own brand of industrial lubrication or grease of some sort. So if you've been doing any of the things we've talked about to improve your discipline, then technically you've been using discipline the entire time and maybe you didn't realize it. So Merry Christmas. It's a good trick. It's not, you know, a trick as in it doesn't work because believe me, all of these things work wonders. I promise you it's a trick because there's nothing that actually promotes discipline. Rather, discipline is a part of everything and everything is a part of discipline. The more you become disciplined of one thing, the more you become disciplined of another. It, it just it's all intertwined. So this is how I learned how to become disciplined. In addition to the countless life lessons, I envision my future. I set my path. I organized myself and harnessed fear, fortitude and firmness. I managed my time. And after some years, I blinked. And when I was disciplined, I realized it. I was a successful man and I was on the path to even greater success. I didn't even know I was being disciplined, but by the time I had gotten there, I had been disciplined for years. And I had told myself that I was just as good as anyone else doing what I do. And, and I also put in the hard work to master my crafts. I put my money where my mouth is. And again, if you're looking for shortcuts, then this is not the podcast for you. This is a podcast for hardworking people reaching for the next rung in their endeavors, or those at least definitely trying to become like this, or those that just want to listen to the commercials, or those that maybe like the sound of my own voice. Anyway, you'll have to master something to find success in it and at least put in the effort to be given even a chance at anything, a degree. My degrees don't guarantee you a job, me a job, anybody a job as a burger flipper or a bank teller. You do by your efforts, 
The piece of paper can help, but don't get me wrong. The real answer is in the discipline and in the hard work, which time management and some other concepts we've talked about, like strategic thinking and decision making, can really be a game changer for. You know, I really should stop calling these things the lubricants of discipline since disciplines and everything. It's kind of like the force, but uh, I'm a Mel Brooks fan, so I feel like I should call this concept the Schwartz of discipline. Have you seen your discipline, Schwartz? My Schwartz of discipline, my discipline Schwartz is as big as you are any. Okay, I, I can't. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Look, you can read about what I'm saying to you in any article on the internet, but I'm going to put reality behind it, the emotion behind it, and a person behind it. So if you ask about it on Twitter, we're going to talk about it on Twitter. And if something's not computing, I'll make it compute. I'll make it make sense. You can email me personally. We can talk about it over email. Look, my talent is in making complicated crap really easy to understand. And if I can make all of our lives better with my skill set, my knowledge, my experience, then fucking so be it. Look, we got to take a chance sometimes, right? So time management, it's a really big deal. I still go by what I went by in the Navy. And and that's if you're not 15 minutes early, then you're fucking late. Man, look, we're adults. You can't show up to something 15 minutes early. You, you want a job, though? You want more money? You want a better office? You want better stuff? You want the world to give you something? The world ain't going to give you shit, man. You can't even show up 15 minutes early. Earn your pay or become your own boss and make your own hours, but at least keep your meetings on time. If you were my client in real life and you were late twice and it wasn't an actual emergency, it was just because you were fucking shitty with your time, we wouldn't be doing business anymore after that. And, and I would expect the same expected from me. And I can tell you from experience, there are people in business that are much harsher with that than me. So that's something that we really should think about and remember. Getting back to hard work, but hard work should be something to respect, you know, something to honor, something to manage, something to leverage, something to utilize, something to be proud of. It used to be that we would admire someone who built an empire from nothing. And now we just admire Instagram asses. And, and look, I'm not hating on Instagram butts. Don't tell the wifles, but all I'm saying is that it's possible to find and keep the American dream. And now that we're really, really awake, truly wide awake, it's time to have our own American Reveille. And it's time to earn our American dream. So until next time, folks, I want you guys to stay firm. And this is James Lane clocking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs>